Hi, I'm Morgan. And I'm Jake. And this is Neverland, Neverland Navigation, Navigation Radio. Radio. Where things are changing. Yeah. Morgan, Disneyland, as long as it exists, will always be in a state of becoming. And so will the rest of the Disney parks. And we're going to take a look at some of our favorite things that Disney attractions have became. Yeah. Through changes. I think this will be a super fun topic because this is something like changes are always controversial you know what i mean um and we're going to talk about some of the ones that we think were for the positive yes change for the better yes we hate to see wasted space we hate to see downgrades just like anybody does with their favorite stuff but there are examples throughout disney parks history of them having some really inventive inspired creative changes to some of their existing stuff that they have on offer So we're shortly going to dive into our favorite instances of those changes. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be a super fun topic. Before Um, we dive in, though, Morgan is a vacation planner. Oh, yeah. And you should hear about the services that she's offering because there's no one I would rather have plan my vacations. And I think you should give her a moment to explain why she should plan yours. Yep. Um, I'm a travel agent and it's completely free to you. So this is kind of a win-win situation that there's like, you can't lose anything from it. So if you email me at neverlandnavigationco at gmail.com or you head over to neverlandnavigation.co, the website, Mm -hmm. um, you can get in touch with me and then I can help with my expertise. I can get you the same price you can get yourself online or lower. I will monitor to make sure that if a better deal comes out that you get it and you get a free gift after your trip. If you've already booked or you prefer to do the beginning booking yourself so Mm -hmm. that I'm not messing with the like payment part of it, you can book it and then we can transfer it to me too. So that's another good, as long as it's within 30 days. So that's another good option. Completely free to you. They pay me commission, but it it doesn't cost you anything and it doesn't cost you any more. You actually get a better deal. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing more magical than a Disney vacation, but that's not true because there's nothing more magical than saving money on a Disney vacation. Yeah, right, and that's they're the expensive, the so you might as well, you know what I mean, get the best deal you can. Even if I get you the same deal, you get something for free from one of my Etsy shops, so yeah. there's no losing. And Morgan's got super cute stuff on the Etsy shop, so yeah. it's it's worth it just for that, in my opinion, if you're already going to be paying, you know, yeah. potentially a lower price. Um, and then also, if you are enjoying um, our content or you are a previous fan of the show, then it would be awesome if you could check out our social media as well. We're on Instagram and TikTok at Neverland Navco. Uh, on our TikTok, we've got all kinds of trivia. and sh- No, photos. on our Instagram. You're right. <laughs> on our Instagram, we've got all kinds of trivia <laughs> and uh, short form stuff. From the parks, pictures from food and dining, merchandise, all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. is on our Instagram. And then on our TikTok, we have some videos about um, Disney history, food and dining, some restaurant reviews and stuff. So if you're looking for some quick and fun Disney additions to your Instagram or TikTok timelines, feeds, then we would love to be at it. Um, Yeah. But if you're here for the episode, then hey, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming here too. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the, some changes. Oh, change. Did, are you getting into any that you don't feel like went well? Or are we just talking about the ones we feel like we really appreciate? Maybe. I'm sure what, some things will come up yeah, in, in our discussion. I feel like that too. Comparisons of things, you know? Mm-hmm. But I've only planned to talk about my favorites, and I've got a couple honorable mentions. As okay, well. cool, cool. Did you do five plus honorable mentions? I did five plus a couple honorable mentions. Okay, yeah. great, great. Um, so let me ask you before we begin some criteria questions. Okay. Did you, did you do anything where they changed the entire ride from one thing to another thing? No. Did no. you? No. Um, I have one that's kind of debatable. Okay, okay. So I thought for, I, I, it's funny because when I was talking to Bailey about this, um, we were talking about that exact same, like, Uh oh no, is it going to turn into this? Uh Right. And I was like, for me, I'm just talking about changes made to a ride that's still the same ride, but with some changes, but I'm okay with you doing it. You know what I mean? If you did. We'll do some little update back and forth. Yeah. And then we also, do you have any shows or restaurants in your list? Because those are things that we thought about mm. possibly exploring. I I kind of do. Do you want me to tell you? No, you don't have to tell well, me. I just want to know if you do. I've got a queue. 
You've got what? A Q, a line. A line. Oh my gosh, <laughs> nice. Lovely. <laughs> it's just it's such an important big upgrade that I felt like it was worth mentioning. And then um, one is, I guess, a show. Okay. It's not a live show. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I also, I have a restaurant in mind. Oh, you do? Oh my yeah. gosh. Okay, I can't wait to hear that. I'm glad we'll have like... Is it a, was it a restaurant that completely changed? Yep. Okay, okay. Total, total flip. All right. Um. Hey, do you want to start us off with an honorable mention though before we dive into it? Or do you want sure. to save them for the end? No, no, I like doing the honorable mention. That's a good idea because they're, I feel like ending with a big bang finale sure, yeah. is important like they do in the parks with the fireworks. Okay, okay, yes, I love that. Speaking of the Big Bang, my honorable, oh. my first honorable oh. mention is them adding Ellen and Bill Nye to the Universe of Energy. Oh my gosh. First of all, what a flawless transition. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And then second of all, I, this didn't even... I had because completely it doesn't forgotten. exist anymore, I know. Yes, that. And also I had completely forgotten that the ride had opened as Universe of Energy without... Yeah. yeah. Can I, you imagine I how never boring? Rode the, <laughs> I, yeah, I never rode the original, so yeah. I only know of Ellen's Energy Adventure. Oh. I think I read the rode the original, but I don't remember it. Possibly because I was sleeping. I don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, El I think it's Ellen, more likely than you think. Ellen and Bill Nye are are such a funny, charismatic addition to this otherwise slow moving dark ride mm -hmm. about uh, dinosaurs and energy that. I just can't imagine that it was super entertaining, for, especially for kids uh -huh. at the beginning. So I really appreciate the addition. <laughs> yeah, I totally also, get that. Also, this is a long ride. Long, long, 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And it's uh, a lot dark mm -hmm. and um, cool. So actually, actually, a lot of kids were sleeping in this. Yes, ride. this was a, this was <laughs> nap the ride for a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot of people. Forty five minutes. I mean, that's the longest. So well, different from what's there now. Guardians of the Galaxy comes yeah. rewind, which is like super fast paced and right. You know, a complete complete shift. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the original version of this ride, I think people have always felt it was long, and have always felt that it would be appropriate for sleeping. But I remember seeing footage of the original. Um, obviously, the dinosaur. Uh, diorama was very impressive even at that time for like um, animatronics reasons yeah um, so that was always cool and then they also utilized a technology where a bunch of screens together would form like a mosaic effect yeah and the screens themselves would rotate on mm -hmm. their axes to create like illusions and stuff and I recall that being like an iconic feature of the ride that was removed for the Ellen transformation yeah true so if you're like a hardcore 80s epcot fan yeah. maybe that's something you're still thinking about sure there's but, definitely all of these are going to create some controversy of course yeah. that's part of the, the nature of them changing, changing anything yeah. but um i think we can all agree that the topic of the ride and the like the length of the ride required some like humor yes. and engagement to yes. like make it more interesting and, right edutainment Edu i was just about to say from an edutainment point of view yeah. this is a a this was an amazing ride and then you have the you invite on the king of edutainment bill nye yeah. that we all bill, knew bill, bill. yeah from our elementary school classrooms when our teachers wanted to put something on and the not best days yeah. of science <laughs> class yeah so um for for me, as a child, this was a major upgrade. Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I loved this ride as a kid. Yeah, and this is this is another reason I'm not going into just changing the ride entirely because obviously, then Guardians would be a major upgrade, but it's so different. Yeah, know? and they only really even utilize the part of it. Right, they only utilize the the front of the building to be the queue of the ride. So really. They built that whole roller coaster in that big blue box outside of the ride. That's really the ride. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, it's hardly even yeah. the same. Um, all right. I've got an honorable mention okay. for you. Great. Um, it is a complete overhaul restaurant edition, um, which was the change from the Electric Umbrella to Connections Cafe and the Eatery mm. in Epcot. I definitely... I definitely appreciate the old school '90s retro I know, Memphis I do too. 
vibes of the electric umbrella. Did you say Memphis? Yeah, that's the design, like, aesthetic of, like, all the squiggly lines and the neon lights really? and stuff. Like, the inside of a Taco Bell in yeah, the yeah, 90s, yeah, remember yeah. those? Yeah. Those are so, yeah. That school of design is Memphis, and that's what was in the electric umbrella, um, like, accents and details for years until it got closed and replaced. But really what I remember most is, like, all the cool neon signs. Yeah. Because they were, like, right. the main feature. In my yes. Opinion. Yeah, the, I don't think the food was particularly phenomenal at nope. the electric <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> That's probably being nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but the decor that, like – Seeing it when I'm walking by, mm-hmm. that that's will hold a place in my heart. Totally. And right outside of that restaurant, I think there might have been one inside too. There was a water fountain that talked to you. Mm, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. That sounds yeah. yeah. That was so like Epcot to yes. me. Yes, I definitely had its charm. Yeah. Um. So the, yeah, a little sad about the upgrade, but I think that the connections. I definitely prefer to be inside of connections than I would prefer to be inside of. Electric umbrella, yeah. Just aesthetic comfort, all of the the food. I think the food's every, better. Yeah, pretty much everything about it is better. Mm-hmm. Um, so it definitely it's has earned bigger. its place. How is that even possible? Because it, it used because the space that is connections and Starbucks is the same space that used to be electric umbrella and something else. Inventions and yeah, part of an invention. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that is right. So um, that's, I guess that's. How. I think that's right. I think Innoventions right. kind of took up that whole space around Spaceship Earth yeah. behind. Yeah. They okay. had their own little corridors. That that's. Do you yeah. know they originally planned for a people mover to move through those? <laughs> no. Yeah, you can actually see in the architecture where the people mover was supposed oh, to go man. by. Oh man. That's why the ceilings are so high in there, but it got cut for budget reasons. Oh, that would have been so cool. Yeah. yeah well, it, in the people mover. Orak, the narrator, mm-hmm. says, because he's talking about um, what Epcot was supposed to be, that, that, you know, the diorama that you see, and he's like, there's a little, I know this is totally different, because yeah. that evolved so much, but right. there's a little people mover in there. I wonder if there's a little Orak. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> I do love that. Yeah. The new narration is so cute. Yeah, me too. Um. Okay, let's see. Gosh, I... I didn't really write what I'm putting as honorable mention and what I'm not. That last one was kind of an obvious one. Okay. So, I mean, should I name another one? Sure, yeah. I I guess. Oh, I'm, wait, an honorable mention or yeah. like a list? Yeah, you can name another Unless you've got list. six on your, how many do you have? I've got five, like, regular ones, and then I've got three honorable mentions. Oh. I've already done one. You name one more honorable mention. Sure. Um, Happily Ever After, in my opinion, is like a... This is so controversial. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about fireworks shows. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I guess maybe spectaculars are in a different category than like, no, no. Shows. The, maybe I should have we specified. didn't. No, we didn't. We didn't say anything about no any. Li- yeah, limits. <laughs> um, this is controversial. I do love wishes. I did love wishes as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, but the advent of projection technology right. is so like. I don't know. It's almost like a must do for theme parks now. Yeah. To have like a projection show. Um, so it, by the time they got around to it with Happily Ever After, it was already kind of felt like it was maybe overdue. Um, and then by the time we got Happily Ever After, the first time I saw the show, I thought it was like groundbreaking. Oh, and, yeah. Like transformative. Yeah, yeah. Um, just in the jaw dropping combination of. Projections on the screen, visual effects like lasers and smoke and pyrotechnics on the castle. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the use of fireworks, lighting effect, and the new soundtrack. I thought it was all like what a modern fireworks show, everything a modern fireworks show could be. Yeah. Um, so Gosh. I thought it was a necessary change to a beloved, you know, which yeah. was like an institution. Right. But like Happily Ever After, I think, was like a. A, a good spiritual successor. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think that they both have their their place in Disney history. It's not something yeah. that neither of them... Sometimes you do an upgrade, although this is a c- kind of completely different, although it's not. Yeah. Same basic idea. Yeah. Anyway. That's why that's why it's in the honorable mentions for yes, me. Because I yes. felt like it's so different from Wishes that like I didn't want to include it on the list, but it is such, in my opinion, such a 
leap forward yes. in like what it is offering that mm-hmm. I couldn't leave it out. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I could agree with that. That makes a lot of sense. But yeah, the projection, adding the projections is huge. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I'll go ahead with an honorable mention. I okay. went ahead and moved one. It's my Q one. So my Q upgrade is the Peter Pan Q. Yeah. So Peter Pan, the, the Q that you used to have to stand in for Peter Pan, which has always my entire life been like uh-huh. a one hour plus. And really often, you know, it's even longer than that. With Peter Pan, you want to say, here we go. But you look <laughs> at the weight and you say, here we go. Yeah. You know? Yes. The This has always been a long wait. Always been a long wait. Yeah. So when they changed it from a terrible line, and I'm talking like snaking back and forth. Sometimes Sometimes outside. outside <laughs> almost never in air conditioning, really. Uh-huh. Um, with, you know, kids coughing, people running into your ankles the Just whole night. Just plywood at the end. Yeah. Which it's still like that at the end, yeah. which is kind of fun. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was such a bad cue. And to mm. upgrade it to such an immersive, um, interactive cue was such an upgrade that I actually stood in line for this ride. Yeah. And I don't really do that. <laughs> they really knocked it out of the park when it came to making the cue. Yeah. Interesting. This earned a spot on my list. It's number oh, five okay. on mine. Okay, sorry. Um, it doesn't matter. I, I didn't I, know what to put down to honorable mentions. I could have put it in five too. I was glad. Um, I'm glad that they, first of all, I'm glad that the reworking of the line, I feel like it made that side of fantasy land like a little bit less chaotic because now there's not like a million people uh-huh. in there. But that is such a busy little funnel of human beings that having that line outside with all those people and then you have to wait more inside it just made the experience so bad leading up to the ride yes right and then it's such a short ride and and even though it's classic it's older i feel like now you can appreciate it more yes because you haven't been like tortured for (laughs) yeah partially in the side outside Yeah. yeah Um, yeah, so, so that was a big upgrade. Totally. I definitely see that. Um, my last honorable mention is, you know what? I'm going to save it because I guarantee it's on your list. Okay. I guarantee it's on your list. Um, so. I had a, once you get into this, I had a hard time. I'm going to have to be justifying things because I like the <laughs> old version so much that like, ugh. You know, that's a, you don't have to justify your love. It's well, fine. I have to justify to myself. You know what I mean? Like, how could you? Well, anyway. these are just our favorite updates. It's not, you know, I know. or some updates we enjoy. It doesn't yeah. have to be okay. crazy. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to get into one. I don't, this is a restaurant and you don't have any of them. So mm-hmm. I think it's safe. It's Steakhouse 71. Okay. As yeah. an update from the wave of contemporary. Oh, flavors. I'm. I, I know we love this restaurant. I'm still surprised you're putting this as an upgrade. I love Steakhouse 71. Yeah, didn't you love the wave? I liked the wave. Okay. I thought it was cool. Um, I really what I liked about the wave was the the walk up and waiting area. Yeah, yeah. Of like, it was these this big blue tunnel, mm-hmm. and then off to the side it was this cool blue lit room. Um, and I thought that was cool, but I didn't feel like it really carried that aesthetic as far as it could have into the dining room. I thought it was kind of, it felt very outdated by yeah. the end of its run. And then I thought that the menu definitely needed to be changed as well. So by the time they got to Steakhouse 71, I thought it was a great update. I think the quality of the food is great. I like the atmosphere. We love it there. for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. And even though it doesn't have, like, a great view of the castle or whatever, yeah. like Ohana, it's still on the monorail loop, so there's a bunch of convenience added. Yeah. The ambiance in, in Steakhouse 71 is fun. I don't think it's as fun as the wave was, even though you're right. It yeah. kind of was getting, like, a 70s feel. Uh-huh. Um, but, but yeah, I I enjoy going there for breakfast so much that I can play. And I like the history in the pictures and stuff yeah, like that. that you was see a, cool... a lot of cool stuff in those pictures. Yeah, and we don't have that anywhere else, really. Do you no. know what I mean? Yeah, it's almost like the... I mean, it's kind of like one man's dream, but we don't even necessarily have as many old pictures of the park and stuff in there. Right. Um, but, like, you can see the Skyway, pictures of the Skyway in there, pictures of 
the original models for a bunch of the attractions and concept art for stuff like Space Mountain before it right. was even made and stuff like that. Right. And um, that is a, for especially for um, fans of like the history of the parks. So people uh, who are yes. fascinated. Yes. Disney by... adults that love the history for yes. sure. Like I so like I I could go in there and look at these pictures for hours. It's not as visually appealing to someone that's not a super fan. Right. You know what I mean? Or Just children probably. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's a good one. Yep. Just a personal favorite update. Yeah. Okay, should I go with one? Yes, I can't wait. Well, this is one. I, I, you guys are not even going to believe I'm going to say this because of my love for DJ Rex. But I put Star Tours on my list. Me too. Okay, because when it boils down to it, mm -hmm. this was an upgrade that needed to happen. We got 3D. And you know I, I mean? don't think you. this even necessarily has to be you like one more you like the update more than the original this is just a quality update this was a know? quality update yeah that's a good yeah. point i i wish we could have kept rex yeah you know what i mean from a nostalgic uh original disney character a uh, parks character you yes, know what i mean of course point of view i wish we could have kept some of that instead of it all completely being movie movie mm -hmm. um but Quality wise, it did improve a lot. I do like how you get different, and I'm sure everybody likes this, how you get different options so the ride's different every time you go. Yeah. Yeah. That is really like unique. Mm -hmm. And um, and it makes it more fun, especially for locals that go all the time. Yeah. And or, you've got so many that go all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just regulars in general. Right. There are a lot of having so many combinations is um a really cool like technological update but i think part of the reason that this update is so great is because it's from the creators of the ride yeah george lucas always envisioned that this ride would be updated and they even had plans to update it for the sequel <laughs> yeah, trilogy right. that didn't happen as you were explaining when you covered the history of Star yeah Wars. right if you haven't heard that episode that's a good one too you might want to go back right uh, yeah i thought the fact that it was always planned to be updated and now is in the form that George Lucas and, you know, at the time Michael Eisner envisioned it to be in the future. I think that's a cool testament to yeah. forethought and execution on behalf of Industrial Light and Magic and Disney working together. Right. Amazing. This, this has the ability to change every time a new star star wars anything comes out and it either just did or is going to again yes exactly the yeah they said that it, it was going to i believe last month if not the month that we're in right now so yeah we haven't experienced it yet we should yes but if it's, it's even out it, it could <laughs> right it might be just on the horizon but uh, either way it's just really cool to see that they're investing care into keeping it updated as well as obviously being like a marketing tool for their new yes, stuff. Yes, yeah. Michael Eisner would be proud. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just the fact that it's getting some attention and making the experience different every time you ride it, I think it's adding some value to it as well. Okay. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. The was, that was continue. mine. That was mine. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've got one that we, we were around for, what, opening night or something? Um in November 2023, they updated Fantasmic. Oh, yeah. At Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, yeah, completely forgot. That was a good upgrade. That, I thought this was, it kept the heart and the feel of the show so mm -hmm. completely intact. It still felt like I was a kid in the early 2000s, yeah. 90s in there. Right. Um, but the scene additions are so, you know, quality and uh, tributes to classic movies or I guess they also threw Frozen 2 in there. They huh? did throw Frozen 2 in there. And but Moana. I mean, yeah. But they were so well done, such well done sequences to keep it relevant. I like how. I with, loved it. I like how with this, they threw Frozen 2 and Moana, which have already proven to be blockbusters, instead of throwing yes. something like Dinosaur. <laughs> in That's there. where they should have put the animatronic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's some movie that didn't do well and they're like let's try to get it to do better by throwing it in here that's when it feels more forced yeah this they did this that feels yeah, sometimes yeah they did that this feels like they are giving the fans what they want mm. you know what i mean because yeah. the fans love frozen 2 mm -hmm. kids little kids <laughs> love frozen 2 yeah i mean we love it too mo and moana you know mm -hmm. what i mean those are ones that i think 
almost every little kid would know. Yes. Um, most adults would know. Hit songs. Yeah, instead of it being kind of a random... Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah, turning red. If they had thrown something like that in there, I would have felt like they were pushing it on me. Yeah, advertising. Yeah. But this is just a nice little collection of current and past favorite Disney moments. What the fans want. That's what I think. Yeah. I really think they, like, listened. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, w- I felt very appealed to. Yeah. Because I love Moana. Yeah. I love Frozen 2. I love Hercules. I mean, not Hercules. I do love Hercules. I do, yeah. Uh, he's not there, though. I do yeah. love um, Aladdin and Mulan, and those are the other things they added, was an, a new Aladdin scene and a new Mulan, like, sword fight scene. And I thought that they were both great. I, um... Yeah, that was surprising, that Mulan scene. I was surprised that they kept as much Pocahontas as they did, but I was I was glad because I like the music of Pocahontas a lot, and they kept Colors of the Wind in there. Uh-huh. Um, I thought that was a good decision instead of like that super long Pocahontas segment that they had right. um, from the show's beginning. Yeah. That, I, that needed to be changed, and I feel like... They replaced it well, and I uh, really enjoyed the current version of the show. Yeah, without completely getting rid of the character, which I like. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's definitely a, a part of Disney history. And um, a part of, like, the 90s feeling of that show. Yeah. That show is so unmistakably 90s. There's nothing anyone can do, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, should I go ahead with another one? Sure, yeah. Okay. A, a fairly recent upgrade that's just a little one that I think a lot of people wouldn't even, like, care about or notice, but it's one of my favorite things to do a lot, it, which has to do with the fact that I never have to wait for it, but is the Philhar Magic upgrade uh, that was yeah. recently, is this on your list? It was the honorable mention that I that skipped knew. because I knew you were going to talk yeah. about this. I love that they added a scene from Coco. Mm. I loved that it, it's just easier to watch now do you, i don't know the technical things that they did to make it better yeah they remastered the 3d film the um the quality of that film and had gotten so blurry it, had, it was so hard to watch for years uh-huh. um sometimes it felt like putting on 3d glasses hardly even did anything in there which is like really bad yeah um but Probably doing, I don't know if they did just a maintenance on or upgraded the projectors, but they probably definitely did one of those two things. And then the restored film together makes it like, it's like watching it for the first time again. Yeah, know? right. I I love Philhar Magic. I love the 90s movies, um, nostalgia for myself. They, do, they did all of the like ones that came out in the 90s, The Little Mermaid, Lion King. Um, Beauty and the Beast. Aladdin again. Aladdin again, yes. Um, <laughs> and so those are like my childhood, right? I think a lot of people, that's their childhood. Yeah. That it probably spans a few decades because even if you weren't alive when they came out, it's something you were watching on VHS. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Or DVD, I guess. The Disney Storybook Collection. <laughs> yeah. The Disney Vault Collection. Yeah. The but, but more collection. so than like Snow White and Dumbo and yeah, you know what I mean? The classics, for whatever yeah. reason, I think that those were bigger for a lot of people. Um, so I it warms my heart that those were in there and then I love that they added that Coco scene. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's kind of it felt um when they announced that they were adding Coco, first of all, I was excited because I knew that the ride needed something uh-huh. or if the attraction could right. use an update. Um I was surprised by the choice of Coco because Coco feels very different from it feels way different the yeah. Renaissance era films. Uh-huh. But when you experience the edition of the film, it's like a very visually appealing um, moment because you're like flying through the city of the dead, which uh-huh. is like a super cool um, visual moment. But then there's this big musical number, and it feels very in the spirit of those, you know big hit musical movies that were what the Renaissance was based on. So it's not a whole new world, but it's like Pixar's version of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I think it's so, I think it's such a beautiful scene and I think it works. Yeah. Yeah. I I like seeing Donald in that environment too. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good addition. Um, All right. I have one left. Oh, okay. How many do you have? Two? I have three. Oh, how did that happen? I don't know. Oh, man. Do you want me to name another one? Yeah, give me another one. How should I tell me? Let me see what your last one is, so I don't name it. 
Okay, that top one? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, well, that's none of mine. So I'll just... Wow. Let me just run through the three that I have because they're not... They're not as... Okay, I'll I'll just start with Soren. Okay. Okay. Soren was a huge change because we got Soren over California in, I want to say 2000. Six. That sounds right. Right it was, in there. Yeah, the year of Mid-2000s. a million dreams, and and we were getting stuff from other parks, and yes. that was our gift from Disneyland California. So that was I amazing ride, right? Yes. And then at what whatever the year was, they changed it to Soaring Around the World. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not saying I don't miss Soaring Over California. I love that we can we've been able to go back and ride it again when they'll like randomly re-release it at Disneyland it. or Disney World uh-huh. um giving you the opportunity to experience it again but i think when i really thought about it because it's hard because when we went on tour over california recently because they really they recently re-released it for Disney World people for a few months uh-huh. um we were like oh this one's better you know what i mean mm-hmm. and i don't know if that's just because it was new um but when you really think about it, the Soarin' over Soarin' around the world was such a a big thing, mm-hmm. and it really made sense for Disney World as opposed to Soarin' over California for you to go to these different places around the world. Oh yeah, the California of it all was always peculiar to me. Even uh-huh. as a child, I didn't understand why specifically we were going to California, right? If not for the sole purpose of promoting a vacation to Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. I was very and confused. actually that had nothing to do with it. Right. Yeah. It wasn't even the their, the intention. their purpose of creating it in the first place in California was so that if you did go to Disneyland, you didn't need to go to these other locations in California. You could just enjoy them in the comfort of Disneyland. Right. Um, but yeah, they, I just, I think that soaring around the world was definitely an upgrade and definitely something that I, broadened our horizons quite literally. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so that one was on my list. Um, when they changed Pirates of the Caribbean to include the characters from the movie franchise. Oh, since yes. that, I, in my opinion, this is controversial, I'm sure. Okay. Um, in my opinion, they kept the integrity of the original ride mm-hmm. and just threw in bits of the movie franchise. Yeah, there I are like, agree with that. Okay, cool. There are like four uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, four, right? Three or four um, animatronics yeah. throughout that they kind of popped in. There's Davy Jones at the beginning, and there, nope, not anymore. But no. he was there. Yes, in the he was there in the smoke. He's not there anymore. Right. And then um, I Captain that, Barbados that, on that the ship. That screen. I do too. That mist screen was cool. Oh uh, yeah. I Even if you just put a talking skull in there, I or don't something. know why they took that away. Yeah. I wonder. They I, also had an update where they had like mermaid. They were mermaids that would swim in the water, but it was just a lighting effect. Oh, like I did it, not know about that. When was that? This was, oh boy. This was well, like. Well, approximately. Of uh, the late 2000s, I would say. Maybe 2000. How did I miss that? Or something. Oh, okay. Because I was living in Tennessee. Mm. Um, there were like a lighting effect where it would look like a mermaid was swimming. Oh, that's cool. Um, was it cool? In front of the water. It was cool, but the operation of the effect was spotty. Ah. So you know what that means. Yes. It's getting canned. It's getting canned. But um, they had Maybe that... that was the problem with the smoke, but it always worked every time I was there. Me too. Or it just wasn't there, which is what it is now. Mm-hmm. But they also had like a siren song that would play like the mermaids were singing to you. And they had a skeleton of a mermaid on the, you know. The... I, that I remember. Yeah. It was on the first island that you come across where there's the pirate with the patch and the hat and he's like got a sword stuck in him, that skeleton yeah. guy. And there are some crabs and stuff. Um, they were, they, um, yeah. as part of this update, they had the mermaids in the water, the mermaid skeleton, and they had like a mermaid carrying case on the island and that was like a prop from the actual film. Oh. So that was kind of cool that okay. we got that for a minute. Maybe when I went on it, because even when I lived in Tennessee, we were coming back to go. Mm-hmm. Maybe the skeleton was there, but the lighting effect wasn't working that yeah. for my vacation. You know what I mean? Totally possible. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that was a, a cool update. But I think when people think of the most significance update to Pirates, they're probably thinking about, well, I guess the installation of Red, the auctioneer pirate. Well, but... that's the most recent. I don't know. that. I still think that the adding the Captain Jack Sparrow's was more significant. Yeah, I was going to say 
they're probably either thinking about red or they're thinking about these like um the movie Mm -hmm. editions which were like controversial at the time but But, not as controversial as the red thing you know what i mean and i think that was just because of the classic uh you know yeah like history history versus women's rights or whatever oh i thought you were talking about for jack i remember people wanting like i'm that's what i was saying with him i I feel like they just added him so it didn't take away no it definitely didn't take away when they changed red were probably like oh yeah when they changed red that whole scene changed so Mm -hmm. it did take away in my opinion there's nothing they could do to our pirates to make it as cool as the disneyland pirates oh no um, it just is never going to be. But it's I, not as long. <laughs> right. It's yeah. not as, there aren't as many scenes. Yeah. It's not as long. It's not as detailed in some places. It doesn't have human bones. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I think that I think the Jack I was as a as someone who grew up with the Pirates movies, I thought the Jack animatronics were so accurate that they were cool. I know, yeah. Like and also, oh, I've heard Johnny Depp goes and does exactly. it. Oh, is that what you're gonna say? No, yeah. yeah sorry. Oh, sorry, go. No, oh, so Johnny Depp would like pop up in the ride. Yeah, like a and people times. wouldn't know. Yeah, and people didn't know that he was coming. So as a kid, we were always like, "Is that Johnny Depp or mm-hmm. is that the animatronic?" You know, it was a fun little added. Oh my gosh. Thing to whisper to each other yeah. about on the ride. Yeah. Um. Right. So anyway, so I th- I thought that was an upgrade. The adding the Johnny Depp. Yeah. Yeah. And that smoke screen, I really liked that. Me too. I do feel like when, and I could totally be wrong. Maybe you guys know and can message me, but I don't feel like I used to get wet as often, if mm. at all. And now it's like Splash Mountain. Yeah, you do. I, I walk off that ride wet. Yeah, or somebody in your boat does. It might not be you this time, but. You got like, lucky this time. Yeah, exactly. So. That that makes me less likely to go on it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? As an adult that doesn't want wet socks. Um, I'm just saying the underwear. line has gotten crazy. The line is always so long for pirates now. Yeah. Makes me yeah. sad. Um, I'm not buying Disney Genie Plus. <laughs> Forget about it. You are sometimes. We're going to do a video on it oh, on yeah. our YouTube channel. Unless it's for you. I'll do it. Yeah, we'll do for it for you. you. Um. I guess let me go ahead and do my last, like, main one. I have something else I want to mention, but just that way you can, then you can do yours, which is a bigger, mine's little. Okay. So I put Haunted Mansion. Ooh, which one? What do you mean? Which change? Well, yes, exactly. So the change I was thinking of when I first wrote it was just the addition of the Hatbox Ghost. Mm. But as a matter of fact, it has gone through, you know, a few changes. And I think that they've all been steps in the right direction in staying interesting. You know what I mean? In, okay. in, in staying spooky and not just seeming corny. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the, the addition of the, the bride with the, the animatronic with her face projection yeah. thing. You know what I mean? That that changed at some point. Yeah, it used to be like um, a figure or something. Was it? Maybe it was. Um, maybe it was a static figure that they changed to a projection, or maybe it was like a an animatronic that they changed to that projection. Yeah, I can't. Now. I can't remember what it used to be, but now it's kind of got that face projection, like um, kind of like in Frozen. Right. Interior um, projection. Yeah, with the axe and the axe moves. And then also, I mean, the, uh, I guess the the heads that pop up from behind the tombstones, those have slowed down yeah. since I was a kid, which that's not an upgrade. I'm going to call that a, a, but I mean, for people's heart health, sure. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. <laughs> and then the queue. The queue, the change in the queue was significant enough to mention. If you have to wait in that queue, at least now, it's more interesting. I think the queue came at the same time that they added that MC Escher and yes, the staircase the stairs, room. Yes, yeah. the stairs. Yes, and that was interesting too. I think that's an upgrade. I can't remember what we lost. But I, I don't think it think was it just was, a hallway. Yeah, I, I was going to say I like don't major. think it was anything like enough to be upset about. Which is the best kind of addition. Exactly. If something is you know just being added for. I have yet to see the Hatbox Ghost. Oh my gosh. I haven't gotten, the I've line has twice. been very long. Yeah. I have not gotten around to it. Uh, I'm not waiting in the Mike Fink keelboat docks yeah. to wait in the extended line of the Haunted Mansion. Well, maybe next week. 
Oh, maybe next week. Yeah, because yeah. we'll go on a Monday. Maybe it'll be better. Last last time I got to go on, it was not that long ago, and it was a Sunday night. And for whatever reason, the lines were really short. Oh, that's great. Oh, my God. I want to go. I want to say 13 on that map. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, Good additions. So, yeah. So, which is your favorite, the, the Hatbox Ghost, do you think? Uh, yeah, right now, because it's new. Cool. You know what I mean? It's hard because... Whatever's newest is probably going to be your favorite. Recency bias. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a real thing. Um, I don't even, I really don't even remember a time before some of these changes. I know, I know. Like, I don't really remember, like, vividly what was in the Escher room before it is what it is now. And I also don't truly remember what the bride used to look like. And then the, there was, it was a practical effect at the end with the mirrors and the hitchhiking ghosts. Yeah, that's That new. got changed to I a don't digital know. effect. Yeah, I don't... I know people, per, some people prefer the classic one. Yeah, I kind of liked the classic one. This one, I mean, I guess it does work most of the time, That which is impressive. Yeah, yeah, it does work most of the time. There are sometimes it doesn't work, but there they are screens, so that happens whenever. Yeah. Um. I, I think the the Haunted Mansion has been updated fairly tastefully. I think yeah. it's still pretty similar to its original version. Yeah, I think, look, I think it was just a, a statue with glowing eyes at one point. Oh, the okay. Bride. So it was a static figure mm-hmm. and they changed it to a, a projection effect. Okay, I actually, I kind of like, I kind of like the glowing eyes. One. <laughs> She's kind of scary. I like it. Yeah. She's definitely too scary for kids. Yeah. She looks like a full haunted house character that's going to really try to spook you yeah um okay should i get into my last one here absolutely Uh, and then i've got just one thing i want to mention oh great Mm -hmm. um this is not on morgan's list at all this is a total transformation um i recently talked about the history of maelstrom and its update to frozen ever after um great episode Thanks. Yeah. And that's, that's, if you guys didn't hear that one, definitely go back for that one. That to one... hear us talk about the pink soap at the bathroom. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> that's the episode we talked about the pink soap. Yeah. Um, and those Denmark bathrooms. Um, the reason that this is my number one is because it is such a thorough and complete change um, of the ride. Um, but it also... Yeah, this is a completely different... You're... Okay, I see where you're going with this. It's a complete change of the ride, but it wisely uses, like, what went before it. And the same way of, like, Star Tours is in the space that in Disneyland used to be Adventures Through Inner Space. Mm -hmm. And because in the Adventures Through Inner Space queue, there was this giant um, telescope feature that was on this, like, platform, and the line had to snake around and be around that. They utilized that room to put in the star speeder and the like maintenance bay thing. And I thought that was such a clever reuse of the space. I feel like that's what they did with the entire <laughs> Maelstrom ride for Frozen. They like repurposed every inch yeah. of it into something new. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a complete ride. Um, and some of the things that they left intact, like the fiber optics in the ceiling and stuff, are like some of my favorite parts of the original ride. So I feel like they left some things that I enjoy as right. well. That being said, I do miss Maelstrom, um, especially for its um, weird, quirky woodland vibes. Nostalgia, like I, yeah. Yeah, I really appreciated that experience for what it was. So I do miss it. Um, but I feel like... Weird edutainment. Yeah, weird edutainment, yeah. funky. But... Like we were talking about wasted space in the beginning of the episode, I really appreciate that they tried to do something with every inch of the ride yeah. and, like, totally transform it. I thought that was nice. And I feel like they made it into something, obviously, brand new, completely different. Yeah, and I feel like the way that they used the same boats and some of the same mm. stuff doesn't feel like cheap like we're saving money by use it feels like they're honoring the original yeah. ride which i love or at least i'd like to think in so. my heart that's what's happening i know please don't tell <laughs> me this is for thing? a budget yeah, reason right right yeah i feel the same way i'm like oh you kept the spiraling magic in the sky yes well, of course you did yeah it would hurt you too much to rip it out of the building well but... it would have hurt my heart so. right back 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 <laughs> um 
Okay, that was my number one. What was this other thing that you were talking about? I'm just, there, okay. I have a few hopefuls. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, like, one is I'm hopeful that whatever the test track redo is going to be, mm. it will be an upgrade because the last time it did not make my list because I feel like uh -huh. the test track from the early 2000s to what it is now was a downgrade. I have to agree. So, I'm hoping that the next one will be an upgrade. Yeah. Um, I... I am excited that they are saying that somehow. I know it's weird. This is going to pay tribute to World of Motion in some way. Yes, which is like about the history of transportation. So I'm enthused by the idea that this is going to have an edutainment component in the and, dark ride portion. Right, and an Epcot history element. What if they and bring back that song? nostalgia for those of us that went on it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. fun to be free or song. You guys know that song? <laughs> I don't remember it. I'll have to listen to it. It's I good. was pretty young when uh, Universe of Motion was a thing, I feel like. Yeah. But even for for those of you who didn't get to experience mm -hmm. it, you probably you could see it on YouTube. You've yeah. watched it on YouTube, right? Yes. Um, um, it, it was a great piece of Epcot history's edutainment. Yeah, it definitely fit into that early set of Epcot rise, Spaceship Earth, Horizons, Universe exactly. of Energy, World of Motion. These are like the dark rides that are responsible for the aesthetic of Epcot yes. overall. All yes. the things you love about Epcot can never exist without the series of rides that World of Motion was part of. Right. So to see them try to tie it back uh, Yes, in, for them to, oh man, for them to tell us that it's, yes, exactly, that it's going to have a tie-in to something significant to Epcot history it makes me excited yeah. and hopeful. There are scenes from the original ride um, that I'm hoping that they pay tribute to and duplicate. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if they'll make it, but some that stick out to me are like, um, there were three animatronics, or I guess they were static figures, but they were all holding wheels of different shapes and they were all like spinning. Mm -hmm. um, and there was just a couple of things like that where I'm like, oh, it would be so cool. There was a cop hiding behind a um, <gasps> yeah. billboard and... Uh... I just feel like that could fit in with, with test track in a way because you're in a car and you're going fast. Well, there's that truck scene yeah. where that truck like surprises you. Out yeah. of nowhere. That would be cool if they could like work that in somehow. Yeah. Um, hey, you know what I miss the most from original test track though? The hot and cold rooms. Yeah. I thought those were so fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I really liked the, the original test room. track. I liked the queue. I mean, not the queue. I liked the pre-show. I thought it was funny. <laughs> Did you like the techno music and crashing sounds in the queue? Because as a I kid, don't remember that. I think that was my first negative sensory experience. Oh, okay. I was like so overwhelmed by it. But I loved the actual ride itself. Yeah. They tested Well, the pre-show when they, he throws in the, they're like, oh, these are the tests we're going to run. Mm. And then she's like, throw in a surprise one. And the person, I can't even remember. It, anyway, they th they're like, uh and then it shows it on their computer and then it shows that the test they threw in was the crash test right and then we're like oh you know what i mean oh we're gonna crash <laughs> you know i do remember it was such a funny so I, I don't know like surprise i remember waiting to go into one of those pre-show rooms because that room you waited in before you got let into the pre-show room i feel like you stood still there for so long mm. waiting for whatever the next pre-show yeah because that's just how pre-shows are um i feel like that's there's a lot of standing still in the in the like trying to get through the test track line now. Yeah, Like is. waiting to get into the room where you design the car, which I, I at this point just don't like that anymore. Yeah. And then you af you're like kind of waiting after that to get into a line, like a funnel. I hate the funneling. You think they're going to get rid of the build your own car thing? I have no idea. I don't know what to yeah. expect at all. I kind of hope they do. The, the I, It's completely like open in my head what this could turn into. I'm hopeful that since they said there'll be um, tributes to World of Motion that mm -hmm. it will be more than, like, nothing. You know what I mean? More yeah. than just an Easter egg. Or, like, a new instrumental version of the song. Yeah, yeah. I am hopeful. A little more would be great. Um, my other hopeful is for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Uh, yeah, it could be great. That's a completely different one, but it's still a splash flume ride. Yeah, it's still, I mean, same ride vehicle, same ride track, same show building. Yeah. Yeah. Different got, story. Uh, different story. I'm very hopeful that um, it's got, it's supposedly going to have a bunch of animatronics in it. Yeah, I've got no worries about it. You know what I mean? Do yeah. you have worries about it? 
Um, I think, well, when we get something new, it's it's natural for those of us that are super Disney fans to worry, are you going to do it right? Are you going to have made this worth it? But I'm really, I feel confident about them. I have worries about walking around the park soaking wet. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> uh, for yeah. the first time in years. Because, <laughs> you know, Splash Mountain hasn't been a thing for a long time. Yeah. So now I'm, uh, no, I, we I, know. I, I we don't know, know if I'm worried about it. I'm sure the story will be great. I love the music. And well, the, the fact that they're adding movie. animatronics when, like, and, and not just screens. Yeah. That, that's huge. You know what I mean? Yeah. They I, really didn't have to. That's very true. They've shown that some of the new rides don't have any. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for the animatronics for sure. Yeah. I, I hope it's great. I hope they've got a nice blend of animatronics and, and screens or projections because I think that if you blend them right, it can be a beautiful thing that, like, keeps up with technology. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, like, Rise of the Resistance does that. Not, yeah. not that this is in any way a Rise of the Resistance level type of thing, potentially. But it is, like, a big, you know, dark ride, thrill ride combo. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I hope it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, and this is one I could, I almost just added it to the list because I feel so confident about how great it's going to be. Um, oh. And because Splash Mountain, as a, even though it's got a nostalgic place in my heart, mm -hmm. it, towards the end especially, like with everything just falling apart. Oh, yeah, maintenance problems. Yeah. It wouldn't take much for it to be an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So even if, even if it isn't as mind-blowingly amazing as I think it's going to be, it's still an upgrade. At least, hopefully, everything will be working. Yes, yeah. everything will be working. Well, yeah, hopefully, that I guess. Would be, that would be great. I don't want to, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, hey, this was a fun episode. I feel like we've really yeah. touched on some, some deep cuts, but some stuff that, you know, it shows that um, some of these changes are, like, you know, for the better and worth being excited about. So Absolutely. So it makes me excited about some of the changes coming to Walt Disney World. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you enjoyed this episode, if you could like, if you're, if you're watching us on YouTube, hi. Hello. If you could like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're not watching us on YouTube um, and you're listening to us, then if, at some point, check out our YouTube channel because not we don't just have the visual version of the podcast. We also have lots of reviews. We do reviews of restaurants and hotels. Uh, after hours events like yeah. everything everything and we're back in the parks um dining um so we'll have some new review stuff um potentially yeah, coming, coming soon as well yeah so it's a great time to be subscribed to the neverland navigation co youtube channel yeah absolutely or to check out a great emerging um disney themed inspired etsy shop that i've been hearing about <laughs> have you heard about this it's called the Neverland Navigation Etsy Shop. Uh -huh. And I hear that they are making phenomenal, soft, high-quality t-shirts inspired by some of your favorite theme park attractions. Is yes, that true? That is true. Oh. Um, and we're not listing everything that we can do. So please, please, please get on Etsy. You could also message us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But if, you mess, if you're thinking about a shirt or a sweatshirt or a dish towel for yourself, or for a gift, um, send a message, tell us what your favorite stuff is, and we'll send you some design ideas mm -hmm. you wouldn't believe. Like, I really love the vintage poster look Yes. Um, on t-shirts, totally. and we've been doing a lot of that recently. Yeah, I have some, some of my favorite shirts are Neverland Navigation shirts. I have shirts um, that are tributes to Captain EO, yeah. uh, from Epcot, The Great Movie Rides, from MGM Studios, a bunch of, like, or dinosaur from the dinosaur ride. Yeah, and um, some new stuff. Yeah, and some some newer attractions as well. So if you've got you know a favorite attraction that you're passionate about, the way that we're passionate about some of them, mm -hmm. then this is the perfect Etsy shop for you. Yeah, totally. Well, I think that's gonna wrap it up yeah. for this time. Um, there will be some more changes made to Disney. You just <laughs> wait and see. Yeah. But until then, we'll see you on, on our, our next, next adventure. adventure. Goodbye. Bye.